My name's Sheila and I am the Education Outreach and Diversity Officer at the Royal Astronomical Society and I have written this book called How to Be an Astronaut and Other Space Jobs. At the age of 13 I thought I would like to have a PhD in astrophysics and I didn't know what it meant. Um, so I, I studied sciences and went to university and um, did eventually get my PhD in astrophysics but on the way I realised that Working in the space industry isn't just about being an astronaut. There are lots and lots of different jobs that help people go into space. Um, you could obviously be an astronaut, but you could also be a space engineer. You could build rockets. You could design spacesuits. There are hundreds of people behind each astronaut. And I think it's, um, it's a really important and really exciting book for young people to realize that there are so many careers out there for them to try. Space is massive, space is really, really big, and it's amazing that human beings have been able to explore some of space. So technically speaking, space begins 100 kilometers from the surface of the Earth. So if you are an astronaut and you fly up in a rocket um, up to the International Space Station, which is 400 kilometers above the Earth, then you are technically an astronaut because you have gone into space. But the beauty of, of space exploration is that we have sent satellites and spacecraft to other places in our solar system, but the solar system is really small and space is massive. Even though we have put this definition of 100 kilometers, space really do does start as soon as we leave the surface of the Earth and it continues on forever and ever. Why do we explore space? I think ultimately we explore space because humans are curious and inquisitive. And it's the same reason that we, we try to explore the earth and the, the depths of the ocean and, and the jungles. We just want to know what's out there. We want to learn more about why we're here. If we learn more about the other planets in our solar system, we can find out more about the earth and how the earth was created and what the fate of the earth is going to be. And because the Earth is the only place that we know of that has got human beings and life on it, then the more we learn about other places in the solar system, the more we can learn about ourselves. Hopefully we'll be able to answer all the questions that human beings have about what's out there and how did the universe begin and what's, how is it all going to end as well. To become an astronaut, you have had to work in a science or engineering or technical industry for at least three years. So that could be military, that could be a research scientist or a, an engineer, and then you have to apply. And if you're lucky enough to get through the application process, it then takes a minimum of two years of training to become an astronaut. And then you um, do your dedicated training for your particular mission. So you might do scuba diving, you might have to learn Russian, you might have to learn more about how to pilot the spacecraft and then hopefully you go into space. There are lots of different types of training that astronauts have to do. A lot of it's classroom based so it's a bit like going back to school and you have to learn maths and physics and lots and lots of different sciences and all kinds of different aspects of um, how the spacecraft works and how to fix it if there's an emergency. But then there's some physical training, there's scuba diving and um, first aid. You have to be physically fit, so you go to the gym and, and do exercise quite a lot. And you have to learn how to work under pressure. You have to learn how to work in a team. So there's lots and lots of different elements to astronaut training. The most important question about being an astronaut is how do you go to the toilet in space? And it's the space toilet is not a normal toilet. It looks a bit like a vacuum cleaner. So there is, um, there is a toilet seat that you sit on and um, instead of a flush, so instead of flushing your waste away, it's kind of a, a, a nozzle which sucks all the, all the waste from your body. So if you go for a wee, if you go for, a, if you have liquid, uh, a liquid waste, what happens is the, the 
vacuum sucks away the liquid, it actually recycles most of your wee into water and then the astronauts drink it. Um, and then the rest of it is, is chucked away. But your solid waste, your poo, gets frozen and gets chucked out the window. So if you ever see a beautiful um, shooting star in the sky and you make a wish on it, you could be wishing on frozen poo that's been chucked out the, the window of the International Space Station. If you want to work in the space industry, there is a job out there for you, regardless of what you are interested in and passionate about. Obviously, you could be an astronaut if you do the right training, but you could also be a, a spacecraft engineer or a, a rocket builder where you actually build parts of the spacecraft. You could design the spacesuits. You could be the person that works in mission control. So when the astronauts are in the International Space Station, you could be the person that talks to them and makes sure they're OK. You could be a research scientist. So you might be um, influencing what what the spacecrafts or the uh, satellites do, the ones that orbit around different planets. And then you get the data back and you can look at the data and learn new things about planets. Or you could be an astronomer. You could use ground-based telescopes or telescopes in space to look at the galaxies and the stars in, uh, in our universe. There are so many jobs and they're so varied and it's a really exciting place to work.